In our last few lessons, we've been looking at aid programs. Um, so different types of aid, looking at Australia's aid program and then the role of um, non-government organisations. And now today we're going to look at the features of effective aid. Um, so in general, what it is that makes aid programs effective. And then we're going to look at the details of one particular program. So this is specified in the study design that you need to know one program, including um, the purpose of the program, the SDGs that it addresses, um, the details of how it's implemented, the partnerships, and then also how it contributes to promoting health and well-being and human development. Okay, so um, there's a bit in it, but it all kind of ties into to looking at a particular program and, and what it is that makes it effective. So have a think for a second. What do you think would make aid programs effective? You could pause and have a little think for a second here. Okay, so there's four key elements for aid programs to be considered effective. Um, and you do need to know these. Um, this has come up before just as a, qu a standalone question, like, you know, describe two features of effective aid. Um, but really, really importantly, you need to know what these are if you are asked to evaluate a program. Okay, by evaluating, you show your understanding of what it is that makes an aid program effective. So the first thing is ownership by the recipient country. We've talked about how aid programs um, have donors and recipients. So it's really important that recipient countries are involved in making the decisions about the program. And then that that program is culturally, socially and politically appropriate. Okay, so it's meeting the needs of that community. The next feature is partnerships. Okay, so generally an, an effective aid program will, will involve partnerships between perhaps government, there might be multilateral organisations like the UN or the World Bank or the World Health Organisation. Um, there's often NGOs involved, they could be local NGOs, they could be um, international ones, um, and then obviously the communities itself, really, really important. Um, having lots of organisations involved means that the resources need to be used appropriately, um, you know, just, just to make sure that that is effective. Obviously, an effective program should get results. OK, so as we talked about, effective aid is not about just, you know, giving things to a community that's that's useful as an emergency thing. But what we want to focus on is increasing capacity of um, local communities promoting their self-sufficiency, okay? So this is usually, you know, grounded in things like training and education and maybe providing resources that can be used long-term. Um, and to ensure that something is results-focused, there needs to be monitoring and evaluation, which basically means, you know, checking in, is the program being effective? It might be, you know, doing surveys and things like that, looking at data, but checking that it's actually achieving what it's supposed to be achieving. Um, and finally, transparency and shared responsibility. That means that all of the information, particularly things that relate to money, so to spending resources, um, are available to everyone involved. So everybody, it's really transparent, it's clear what, what the goal is and how this is being achieved. Um, there should be really clear roles. So remember, we've got all these partnerships involved. It's important that everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing and they take responsibility for those roles. Um, and it's really important to have measures in place to prevent corruption. So that usually involves someone overseeing everything um, to make sure things are being done properly and there's no money or resources being used inappropriately. Okay, so just jump in and have a go at question one, which is just, um, naming these four features and then describing what they are. Okay, we're going to spend the, mo the majority of this lesson looking at a particular program. This is a sexual and reproductive health program in Cambodia. And we're going to go through all of those things that were on the first slide that, that you need to know about this program. So this program, you could again pause here for a second and think, okay, well, what, what SDGs might be addressed in a sexual and reproductive health program and you know the SDGs are on these slides on, on the top and bottom of this slide so you can have a quick um, pause here 
So the first thing that's really addressed is SDG3, good health and well-being. And we know that one of the key features or two of the key features of SDG3 are um, maternal health and then also decreasing preventable deaths of newborns and children. So that can absolutely be addressed in this program. It also focuses on SDG5, gender equality, by you know, improving the, the decision making and the power of women that obviously promotes gender equality. And finally, you can also link it to SDG 1, no poverty, because we know that if people have more control over the size of their families, they're less likely to be in poverty. Okay, so having less children means that families tend to have less levels of poverty because there's less people to feed and look after. The overall purpose of this program is to improve access to sexual and reproductive health information. Okay, so it's actually a very simple program. This is not about building all these new hospitals and you know providing all of this stuff. It's giving information to people. And particularly, um, we're looking at people in, in quite marginalized communities in a really um, rural area of Cambodia. So just pause here and answer question two. All right, this is just a little bit of um, you know me sharing something with you, but I, I got to spend um, a month in Cambodia when I was finishing my physiotherapy degree. I did a placement there, um, working in a really, really remote community, similar to the one um, that this program does. So um, this top photo is actually, we were involved in, in training um, a group of Cambodian physiotherapists. Okay, so we were there to support them to develop their skills. Um, you might notice that, that most of the people in that photo are men, so pretty much all of the um, physiotherapists that we worked with were men. And that, that is quite standard um, in Cambodia that generally it's, it's males that get the opportunity to have higher levels of education. Um, a big part of our placement there involved um, going around to local communities. So this here is a pretty standard house um, in one of the rural areas that we went into. This is the inside of that house. Um, there was a few, uh, a family that lived in there and that was a family with multiple generations. So there was, um, you know, young children, parents, and then grandparents. Um, this was a, a few kids from um, one family. So you can see, you know, very large families there, lots of kids, um, which obviously means lots of resources. Um, and then, yeah, traveling around was, was pretty, um, exciting, generally people travel around on motorbikes, there's not very good um, road quality and things like that. So just a bit of background into um, what life is like in some of these communities. Okay, so the reason for the sexual and reproductive health program in Cambodia. In general, there is a lack of health knowledge um, in a lot of parts of Cambodia, but particularly in remote areas. So this here, this is a map of Cambodia, and this is the province um, where this particular program is run. So, you know, the, the capital city is down about here. So this is actually a very, very remote area um, with not a lot of access to, to health knowledge and family planning services. There's quite a high fertility rate, meaning that, that women in these areas tend to have um, lots of children, especially in compared to um, city areas. There's also very high rates of um, pregnancy amongst adolescent women. So more than a quarter of girls aged between 15 and 19 in this province um, are either pregnant or have had children. Okay, so that's a very high number of um, kind of teenage mothers. Um, and in general, it is recommended that, that women wait a little bit longer to, to start having children, um, just purely because their bodies often aren't ready at that young age, as well as, you know, that means not having access to education, um, generally not having as much money to support their families. Um, there's a high under five mortality rate in this area. So it's, it's over 50 deaths per 1,000 live births, and also a high maternal mortality rate um, you don't need to know these exact figures, but you should be able to link to, you know, higher under five and maternal mortality rates as being a really important reason that, that we need better sexual health, better sexual and reproductive health programs. Okay, so just kind of, you know, create a paragraph for question three, um, highlighting this information. Okay, so the program implementation, and you do need to know the partnerships as well. 
So it's implemented by the UNFPA, which is the United Nations Population Fund. And this is done in partnership with UNICEF, which is the United Nations Children's Branch, and also the Cambodian government. And within the Cambodian government, it involves the Department of Health, the Department of Education, and the Department of Women's Affairs. Okay, so quite a few partnerships involved in this. In terms of how it's actually delivered, so district leaders, um, these are basically people in, in each community that are the leaders of that community. It's really, really important that leaders of the community are involved in these programs leading you know, to make that effective aid. So talking about that kind of ownership by the recipients, that involves the district leaders. So the leaders are trained to deliver education outreach. That basically means, you know, bringing education to people rather than, you know, expecting people to travel to hospitals or see doctors for these things. They will hold these kind of community training sessions where you can see there's lots of um, women from the local community and we've got here district leaders delivering that information. To make it accessible, um, members of the village and those district leaders would go around to families, so go to their houses and encourage them to attend. Okay, so that's really important in making it personal um, and making it relevant to that local community. Okay, so in terms of the program itself, it's really, really simple. Go to families, encourage them to attend training sessions and then provide education, you know, in the local language that is appropriate and relevant to people. Okay, so just go in and answer question four. Okay, so some of the outcomes of this program, there's two kind of main overall outcomes and then they achieve certain things. So the first outcome is obviously increasing the knowledge of sexual and reproductive health, including contraceptives. Okay, so that could be um, talking about barrier methods of contraception like condoms um, or things like um, you know, contraceptive pills or intrauterine devices, things like that can be, that can be more long-term contraceptive. Okay, so by increasing knowledge and access to um, family planning, there was a decrease in the rates of teenage pregnancy. So remember we said originally there's 25% of um, women aged 15 to 19 had children. So that number decreased. Also a decrease in the birth rate or the fertility rate meaning people have less children um, overall. And an increase in the spacing between births. Okay, it's really important that women have adequate time to recover between childbirths in terms of their health. Okay, so just by improving knowledge, these things were achieved. Also, by improving knowledge, it made people more likely to have a skilled birth delivery. So they were more likely to attend a clinic or have a midwife involved in their birth delivery. And that's really, really important for decreasing maternal deaths. Um, so we know that maternal deaths happen from things like hemorrhage, so lots of bleeding or infection um, if things are in you know, um, not sanitary conditions. Um, it also decreases child deaths, particularly from asphyxiation, um, which is basically you know, losing oxygen if there's a, an obstructed labor. And also decreasing the um, maternal morbidity associated with things like obstetric fistula, which is something that occurs um, with, uh, with obstructed labour um, and can cause ongoing issues, particularly with things like continence for women. So that can obviously be um, a really big impact on someone's life if they're having issues with urinary or faecal incontinence because of complications in childbirth. Okay, so some really effective outcomes from a very simple program. So just summarise um, those kind of in a bit of a paragraph form in question five. Okay, so the next question I kind of want you to think about, um, there is also, I, I've uploaded a document which is the, the program description, um, and in that it does discuss what are the impacts on health and wellbeing and the impacts on human development. But I'd like you to have a think about those first before reading it, but you know, thinking back on the outcomes that we just saw before, how could they contribute to different dimensions of health and well-being? 
Now, if you really wanted to, to challenge yourself, you could try and link to all five dimensions. Okay, You would absolutely be able to make those links, but I want you to link to at least two dimensions of health and well-being in um, the worksheet. And then also think about how could this program impact human development? So again, I want you to link to at least two of those concepts of human development. So things like a long and healthy life, or um, having access to resources for a decent standard of living, or having increased choice and capabilities. Okay, so linking to those specific um, concepts of human development in question six. Okay, this is a skill, it's a high level skill um, that comes up in the exam, and it's usually, you know, worth between six and 10 marks, these questions. Um, and it involves being able to evaluate a program, okay? Evaluation is a, is a key skill. It's, it, there's quite a lot to it. So in an evaluation, you should, if it's of, of a program like this, you should be able to discuss, you know, the purpose of the program and the SDGs that it addresses. So kind of what you've done at the start of the worksheet. Um, Discuss, discussing the program in relation to those features of effective aid. Okay, so remembering those features being the ownership by the recipient country, partnerships, um, a, a focus on results and monitoring those results and transparency and shared responsibility. Okay, so being able to link your understanding of the program to these features um, is a really key skill. And then also being able to discuss how that program promotes health and well-being and human development. So when you're answering this in the worksheet, you're going to be repeating, obviously, some of the things that you've said in those previous questions. They're kind of used to, to scaffold your ability to answer this type of question. OK, so um, have a go at answering that. It should be in paragraph form and you're probably looking at, you know, between two to three paragraphs. OK, you might have a paragraph that describes the program, how it's implemented. You should have a paragraph that links to features of effective aid, so specific parts of that program that link to these things, and then either one to two paragraphs on how that program would promote health and wellbeing and human development. So have a go at that, and then I will um, upload kind of an exemplar response um, after you've done that, so you can look at yours against that. Okay, so we've looked at effective aid programs, so those general features, as well as the details of that one particular program, its purpose and the SDGs, how it's implemented, the partnerships, and then its role in promoting health and wellbeing and human development. Thanks.